Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about unofficial memory upgrades for the brand new Synology DS420. Now I say it's brand new, it's been around for about a month or so given uh, the time of the recording of this video at least here at late July. But it is a NAS that a lot of you have seen as a great little middle ground in the terms of the new uh, NAS series from Synology in their disk station portfolio that gives you everything like NVMe cache, gives you a dual core CPU and gives you a bunch of stuff. But at the same time, a number of you aren't exactly overwhelmed by the amount of memory inside. This device arrives with 2 gig of DDR4 memory by default that can be upgraded to 6 gig of memory with a 4 gig uh, installation module from Synology. That is a DDR4 SoDim 2666 megahertz official memory module, which goes inside and gets you to 6 gig, which is the recommended maximum from Synology. But that memory module is about 80 or 90 quid. It is not cheap, that little 4 gig module. And a lot of you are looking at third party, unofficial, and let's be honest, unsupported upgrades in terms of upgrading your memory. So before we go any further in today's video, and I know I've made lots of these with almost exactly the same disclaimer, just in case you didn't see those, we need to hammer this out because it's very important to you and your data. First and foremost, this, what we're doing today, I'm running this test in the likelihood that a number of you won't have to. And I don't want any of you to run an unsupported system that may destabilize your storage in a way that you're not prepared to encounter. We're installing memory that Synology do not support. And by that, they mean that if something goes wrong, they're not able to provide you technical support because you've run an unsupported configuration. And the things that they say that this device, the DS420 Plus, can do are not achieved using that unofficially unsupported memory. It's utilizing the stipulations and hardware that they say it is possible with. So do bear that in mind. Also, if you're going to run unofficial memory, there's several things you have to bear in mind. One, you need to know that you have several layers of backup in place. If you're going to run um, a setup that the manufacturer of the device you're using, it doesn't have to be Synology, it can be anyone, make sure you have got at least two tiers of backup strategy and some form of redundancy. So in terms of backup, we're talking NAS to NAS over the network, NAS to cloud, NAS to another NAS by the internet, NAS to USB, and you know stuff like that. And in terms of redundancy and recovery, we're talking RAID, we're talking snapshots, we're talking that kind of periodical um, return to your storage. Make sure you've got a multi-layered backup strategy in place before you start running a setup that may or may not destabilize your storage array and could lead to you losing your data. Another thing to bear in mind is that Synology uh, systems do arrive with the ability to self-test their own memory. If you use the Synology Assistant tool, there is something built into that that I'll show you at the end of the video that allows you to run a memory test on the NAS. Do that periodically if you're going to run an unofficial memory setup because it ensures that you can check if something's going wrong. It is a pass-fail system. It's not really analytically challenged, but it does make sure that you can keep an eye on things if you do have memory problems and adapt accordingly. But once again, know that you are running an unsupported setup. So for today's video, we are using probably the more budget memory options out there, a company called Time Tech, which quite frankly, I hadn't even heard of until the start of this year. We are going to be utilizing the 8 gig module, to see if that works. And if that is successful, we're going to run a 16 gig module in the one available slot. So in other words, we are running a potential 10 gig memory setup and a potential 20 gig memory setup on the DS420. What I've done, and I recommend you do the same if you choose to follow the steps in this video, I've already installed um, DSM on this, the latest version of DSM, and I've made sure that the drives inside are already in a RAID configuration. So I've done all of that setup with the default memory and the default settings. And they've, I'm now powering down the device, which I've already done, made sure there's no power at the back, and then I'm gonna remove the drives one by one, making sure to keep knowing the order that they're in. Bear in mind, of course, that you know, with SHR that's not as important, but it still never hurts just to keep that level of storage discipline. And then I'm gonna install that unofficial memory module. Now, as described, if you are going to do this, some of the main benefits you're gonna see this in are things like uh, virtualization containers, um, surveillance as well. You won't see as much of a benefit in things like Plex Media Server, particularly at this amount of storage, but there's lots of ways in which you will see the benefits 
of this video, but just know the risk. And I know I'm really, really overplaying this um, worrying thing. This isn't a legality thing. I just don't want you guys to lose your data. Now, on the back there, you can just about make out the sodium module there inside. Uh, the first one we're going to go for is the 8 gig module. This retails for about 30, 35 pounds shopping around. I know obviously your dollars and your euros and stuff like that, it's going to differ wildly. And if you are interested in getting a NAS that has unofficial memory upgrades beyond that of the 6 gig maximum uh, detailed by the manufacturer, you've got a couple of options if you want to play it safe. One, you can contact span.com directly in the link in the description. And there they will pre-make your NAS for you. You will have to buy it with drives, of course. But from there, they will set up the RAID, do some memory tests, basically test that memory out, run some VMs and stuff, and just make sure the configuration is working. Second option, there's a full compatibility list of all the different kinds of memory that's constantly updated at NAS Compares in the description. So I've installed that memory module, make sure it clicks in at the top and the bottom. And now I'm just going to pop the drives back in and then move this device over to the test area over there. And then I'm gonna boot it up to see if it sees that eight gig. And once again, if it's successful, I'm then going to repeat these steps, this time with the 16 gig. <coughs> Sorry, a bit of a sore throat today. Um, so, we're nearly there. I hope you guys try this out. And if you have tried this before, or at the moment you've tried tested other memory suppliers, uh, at the moment, we have tested um, TimeTech, we've tested Kingston, we've tested some Samsung modules, and of course, we've tested Crucial and the official memory modules inside this device. So if there's any that you've tried with success or failure, do let us know in the comments. But I've, get the I've got the device set up. Let's make our way to the screen. I'll get this sorted out, and we'll see if this is visible. Okay, so I'm pleased to confirm that our DS420 Plus has booted with the TimeTech memory inside. As you can see here, you can ignore the other NASs, that's other tests happening right now. But the 420, you can see from the IP there, has logged in. We can get into DSM and we can take a look at a few of the ways in which we can test if that memory is available and the effects that the TimeTech 8GB memory module has had on our Synology DS420 Plus. And remember, we are going to test the 16 gig in a short while. So if we go into the control panel, we can look at the information center and we can see that it has recognized 10 gig there inside. That's the internal two gig and an additional eight gig of memory. If we go forward we can go to the resource monitor have a look and double check and in the resource monitor this is where i think it's the most common area where you can see a few of the common inconsistencies start to appear a number of you may or may not be aware that the synology system will often flag if the memory being utilized is unsupported in the top right there'll be an alert it may not be on day one but it will appear eventually um, you can see that the utilization is there in the background and if we go into the memory option, we can already see one of the early issues that does pop up with Synology NASes and under support, unsupported memory. You can see that the resource monitor is not built around this kind of composition. And this is a classic example of what I'm talking about by unsupported configurations. The NAS is not designed for this. Ergo, this is one of those examples of something that you're doing that the NAS was not built to do. Now, if we go into Virtual Machine Manager, this gives us the ability to double check that um, we're able to allocate memory. So we can have a look here and we have got the Virtual Machine Manager up and running. If at the same time we go to the Task Manager, we're able to list all the processes happening in real time on our Synology NAS. And we can see there all the different apps that are running in the background and how much memory they're utilizing. And of course, the one we're looking at now is Virtual Machine Manager, which is currently only using 109 megabytes. So let's go ahead and create our virtual machine area. Let's go ahead, stick it on there. And we're going to do a one core VM because there's only two cores on this dual core NAS. And the memory, what we want to see is how much we've got and we can allocate all the way up to 10. So let's allocate 8 gig of memory. We're going to use an enormous amount of memory there. We're going to go ahead and call it test VM. Go ahead, click next, and it's going to ask us for storage. We're going to give it 250 gig. We're not going to um, install the guest tool, although I do recommend you utilize the guest tool for virtual machines. It's a very, very useful disk full of drivers and easy ways to execute certain VMs, particularly Windows VMs. And it will invite you to download that tool. I'm not gonna do it now, 
but I recommend you do that. Although we're going to be running today a blank VM here with no Windows um, OS disk or any kind of boot disk. If you do run a VM, you're going to need a boot disk and of course, that slides your guest tool to get it done as smooth as possible. So I do recommend you check that out. But we're going to go ahead, select the file types we're going to be going for. There's our VM created there with our eight gig of memory. We're going to ask it to be powered on. And we're going to see what happens when the virtual machine manager allocates eight gig of memory of the available 10 gig of memory to this virtual machine. So we're probably going to see the effects of this over here on the resource monitor in real time as well. I don't think we're going to need to refresh anything too much. Right now the VM is powered on. So let's have a look and connect to it. That's just going to run it in the background. But again, because we're not running a boot CD, as you can see, it is stating there's no boot CD available. And as you can see, the virtual machine manager has now pre-allocated 8 gig of memory with the 210 gigabyte here being utilized for running virtual machine manager in the background. And at the same time, the uh, amount of memory that's available is still around two gig to other services, but bear in mind the system will do some intelligent caching there in the background. But again, although that bar at the bottom has been rectified, which I think a lot of that has been done by the VM procuring eight gig of memory, it's still a bit shaky and it doesn't feel like it's running as smooth as it could and again that's one of the uh, ongoing issues you may find with a virtual machine so let's shut down this vm now and i'm going to force shut down this vm but i don't recommend you do that generally because it can harm vms in a big way i'm shutting that down in that way uh, just to make it easier um, i'm going to leave it there because we're going to reuse that vm in a little while if the 16 gig module of TimeTech um, DDR memory is recognized. So we're gonna leave that there. If we go back now into that resource monitor, that eight gig should have been freed up ideally. If we go into there, that eight gig now, we've still got now 8.3 gig available. And in the task manager, virtual machine manager should only have two, maybe 300 gig of an ongoing process. It's only 100, so it's quite intelligent. So let's shut down now this uh, device, go for the shutdown, and then we're going to install our um, 16 gig module as well. And just while that's doing that, because you do want to make sure your drives have been given sufficient time to spin down, just a couple of things I wanna touch on. First and foremost, that memory testing facility that I mentioned earlier on. If you are gonna go down the road of unofficial memory installations, I strongly, strongly recommend that you take advantage of the memory test facility built into Synology Assistant. If you don't have this tab here, go into the settings there, and there's a tab there, readily available. Click that tab, click OK, and then select the NAS that you want to test, and then there'll be an option to memory test. Now, the amount of time this takes will be heavily dependent on the amount of memory, the power of the NAS, so do bear that in mind. I've done these before, and they can take several hours, and during that period, the NAS will not be accessible, and will reboot at least once. So do bear that in mind. But I do recommend if you are going to use unofficial memory that's unsupported by Synology, that you periodically do memory tests as well as make sure you've got those backups and redundant uh, recovery options in place. So what I'm going to do now, now that's done, I'm going to make the switch now to the 16 gig module, as you can see here. And this is the memory module we are utilizing. Uh, the TimeTech Hynix IC um, DDR4 and the 8 gig model right there. So from now on, let's switch over now back to the NAS. I'm going to head over to the other side of the studio, install the 16 gig module and see if the DS420 Plus will see it. So let's recover and reboot the system to see if that works. Right, so we've rebooted our DS420 with the 16 gig TimeTech module, and I'm pleased to confirm that it has booted. There it is down there, and once again, there it is up there. If I did have time, I would have run a memory test, but I will at the end of this video. But I do still strongly recommend that you guys periodically run that test. So, let's run exactly the same things we did before. Let's open up the control panel, let's open up Virtual Machine Manager, and let's open up the Resource Monitor. So first and foremost, let's go into the control panel. 
and we can see 18 gig of memory has been recognized on this DS420 plus. So it's the two gig plus the 16 gig module that we have attached. On top of that, we can see very low utilization of memory there in the background. And if we go into the dedicated memory area, we're not seeing as many of the graphical inconsistencies, but it's still a little bumpy along the way. Um, it's nice to see that it is available. And of course the system is reserving an area of uh, memory and it will utilize and intelligently cache there in the background. And if we switch to the task manager, we'll be able to see all of the individual processes once again listed and we'll list them by memory. And the one of course that we care the most about is the virtual machine manager. So if we go into the VMM, we can have a look at that virtual machine that we utilized for the previous video, which again is set to eight gig. So in order to test this memory, I think what we should do is up that memory. So we're gonna ramp that up to 14 gigabytes of memory across this 18, uh, the 20 available. Or oh, actually let's ramp it up a little further. Let's go for 16, shall we? And so we've got, maybe not this plate, say 15 gig, just to be on the safe side, attached to this VM. So we're making those changes to the virtual machine. And as soon as it's done, we can now power on that virtual machine. So we're probably gonna see the spike down here on memory utilization, as well as a further spike here on the resource monitor. And again, we'll connect to that VM as well in real time. So it's just gonna connect up. It's just powering on, so it must now be running, connect. There is the kind of BIOS boot there without the image disk. There's our virtual machine allocating 15.22 gigabytes of memory. The majority of the memory is being utilized by there. And as you can see, it has seemingly actually grabbed that memory. But of course, we don't know the long-term repercussions of utilizing unofficial memory, particularly budget unofficial memory as well. But I'm gonna wrap things up here. I think this test has proven that this system will be able to see the memory. Although of course, it doesn't give us long-term ideas about what the impact this will be on your storage. So please, please, please make sure you have got those multi-tiers of backups and recovery redundancy options in your storage array. And periodically use that memory test option. It's too useful not to at least take advantage of, and it's there for a reason. In fact, I would recommend people use this even with official memory. But thank you so much for watching. We'll be continuing our testing across different devices with different memory and seeing the results and sharing whether it's good or bad. And otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed the video, click subscribe to learn more and visit the links in the description to both NAS Compares and the full list of tested and compatible memory and span.com for pre-built NAS solutions. I will see you next time.